So our, uh, our third user that we're going to bring up is, a, uh, is, is not in the media business. They are in, uh, in something that, uh, that probably many of us have to deal with on a regular basis as we, uh, as we go about our business. But um, they, uh, they are making use of, uh, of OpenStack storage in some interesting ways. And, uh, and I'm really excited to bring up senior manager for Concur, Dan Wilson. Go get him. Thank you. Really excited to be here today and have the opportunity to share the story about how we brought OpenStack into our environment. Uh, but before I get into that too much, let me tell you a little bit about Concur. Uh, how many folks here today are traveling on business with a show of hands? Thank you, quite a few. And uh, of those, how many of you are excited about the prospect of filling out your expense claim to get reimbursed? Just as I thought, nobody. Nobody likes expense reports, and that's where Concur comes in. We automate expense reports and travel booking to make it easier for the business traveler. And at the same time, we give your businesses much better visibility into that spend so they can control costs before it happens. But don't take my word for it. Here's a short video from one of our customers. Great. Well, you saw in the video there how he was taking a picture of the receipt. Uh, that is a critical part of our uh, uh, system and how it works. In order to get that visibility into the spend, we have to store the receipts in our system. And I don't know about you, but I don't remember what I expensed seven years ago. Well, guess what? We have to at Concur. We have to store that data for seven to 11 years, depending on international tax laws. And that adds up to a lot of images. And what we saw is that with all of that data in our system and the, the growing adoption in mobile, that we needed to make some changes to our environment to scale. One of the areas that we wanted to uh, fix was our storage tier. We were relying on Windows file share technology, and we wanted to bring in an object-based storage system. We ended up choosing Swift, and I'll explain a little bit more about why we chose Swift in a few minutes. But before I do, you know, here's the team at Concur that really made this a reality. Uh, really proud to work with these developers and architects uh, in our company. And this is the solution that we came up with, which gives us a lot more linear processing and the ability to scale every tier of the processing. So why did we pick Swift? Well, uh, first of all, it gives us the ability to choose our own hardware for our data centers to run our storage system, what gives us better cost savings at that tier and gives us the performance that our customers need. Uh, and when we grow that system, all of the data gets spread equally across every node, so our customers have a very consistent performance experience. Another uh, aspect that I love is the visibility into the code. Uh, there's nothing more frustrating to me than when I get an error message, I don't know what it is, I Google it, Google doesn't know what it is, and then I'm left to use enterprise support or customer support, and most of the time, it just leaves us very frustrated and not knowing the cause of an issue 
and we have to find a way to, to architect around it. I'm looking forward to the opportunity to dig deep into the code and improve uh, the code for the entire community. The last feature, which was really critical to us and we couldn't deploy in our environment without, is global cl clusters. And Jonathan's going to come back up and tell us more about that. Jonathan? Thanks, Dan. Thank you. So we just had our, uh, our eighth release of OpenStack, the Havana release, and there were about 400 features in there, but one of the biggest ones was in the object storage system. And this was a, an, an update to how replication and data is managed, not just within a single cluster. You know, um, the object storage system has always had a high level of durability within an OpenStack cluster that's in a region or a data center. But uh, in, in Havana, this was, uh, was, was really improved to where these clusters can now span multiple geographies. So you can have an object storage cluster that has nodes in Portland and nodes in Hong Kong, and replication is managed across both of those environments so that you get an even higher level of durability. But it goes even farther than that. And we have a little animation here, let's go ahead and play that, that, uh, that demonstrates how this actually trickles down to the, uh, to the individual users. If you have an environment that, that spans multiple clusters, you can, uh, as a user, just go about your normal daily use of your applications, and using technologies like geo-load balancing and geo-DNS, be routed automatically to the location in your global SWIFT cluster that's closest to you. So I upload some data, and it gets written to Portland because I'm in the US. The object storage system then automatically replicates that data to the other locations in the global cluster, and now we have durable copies in Hong Kong. What's great about it, though, is now if I am traveling, and let's say that I'm in Europe, and I want to pull up uh, something from the internet, and we all know that what the internet is good for is silly cat photos, right? <laughs> then uh, GeoDNS is automatically going to route me to the closest location and pull that data, in this case, Hong Kong. So you end up with a higher level of durability, you end up with better performance for your end users, and you can also end up with lower cost for, for performance across this new feature that's, uh, that's actually in, uh, built right into OpenStack Object Storage now. Thank you. Well, as uh, you heard, it's a pretty incredible feature. I'm really excited about having it in our data centers. What we really like about it is uh, a couple of things. One, it gives us that resiliency across multiple regions for our data. Uh, it's very important that we keep all of our images. Uh, but also, it gives our customers better performance when they're accessing the receipts. Uh, we plan on using this technology in other big business segments at Concur. And uh, I would like to, to give our customers the option to choose which regions their data is stored in. So with that, and uh, uh, thanks to the efforts of the community to bring that, that feature uh, into OpenStack Swift, uh, and also thank you to, to SwiftStack. Uh, we're able to now scale our uh, architecture the way it needs to scale over the next uh, year, uh, or several years, I should say. Sorry. Um, in fact, I did an analysis over uh, what we're expecting for our scale. And within five years, we'll have over 10 billion images stored in our environment. And now we have an environment that can handle that. Great. Thank you, Dan. Thank you. So um, 10 billion images. And as you were pointing out, you know, your customers are some of the, the biggest companies in the world. And there are rules and regulations around what you have to do with, with all of these artifacts to maintain them. And yet you're using something that's really kind of cutting edge technology from an open source project. How do you get the comfort level in, uh, in, in deploying that kind of technology? Have you been able to find the partners and the support that you need from the community? Yeah, that was huge for us. I mean, we're, we're not experts at this. Uh, we're still learning. And uh, having a strong partner that, that knew it already uh, made a big difference. And really, we had to trust uh, that, that company quite a bit mm -hmm. um, because it is such a critical part of our infrastructure. Yep. Yeah, and, and I think that, uh, that um, you know, many of these users that, that we're going to hear from have found partners like SwiftStack and, and others in the, in the um, ecosystem that have helped them to be able to meet those business needs. So thank you very much, Dan. Thank you.
Thank you.